Welcome to the Ten Commandments podcast with Chad. Today we're going to be going over commandment two, which is, you shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. So we set the foundation with commandment one, which is, I alone will be your God. So what does this commandment mean? You shall not make for yourself a carved image. There are plenty of interpretations on this one to go around, mostly focusing on you shall not make an image. There are a number of churches who don't allow any kind of images, even to the extent of if you have stained glass windows, you can't have any image in that stained glass. Uh, Some churches don't even allow crosses in their buildings with the idea that that's an image. So I think where many go astray is in focusing on the images part of this command. But I think the substance can be found in the part of the command that says, do not make for yourself. And that's what we'll explore in this podcast. So first, let's take a look at the context. Israel has just completed their exodus from Egypt. Israel's learning about this God who brought them out of Egypt in a very miraculous way. And coming out of Egypt, Israel is coming out of a place that had a lot of gods, each with their own image, a highly elaborate religious system to appease gods for different things. So Israel's being pulled out of this way of life again into a different way of life. Israel's already encountered a big change with commandment one, God saying, I'm the only God. And now with this, he's saying, don't make an image of me, right? And this again is a huge change because it's it's totally different from what they've been practicing. I'm sure they're confronted with ideas of how will we ever survive if, if we don't appease gods or find a way to appease now this one God for his favor They're coming out of a culture where they must do all these things for these gods in order to survive, uh, in order to have their crops grow, in order for the rain to come. It's very much a system of appeasing gods, and it's a whole change in the dynamic of the relationship. It's a change from gods that must be appeased to a god who's nurturing and raising them. It's a change from a God saying, you must appease me, to a God saying, I will take care of you. Another way to say it is, it's a change from God saying, show me your loyalty, to a God who's saying, seek to know me and my love for you, and I'm loyal to you. It's a change from God demanding from people to God giving to people. And in this dynamic, God says, don't make things up about me not images, not ideas. Instead, listen to me and learn who I really am. I want to teach you these things. And I think that's, again, where this commandment comes in. Don't make for yourself, not just images, but ideas and systems and ways where we create a God. But instead, we're to find out and learn who God is. Maybe we could approach it this way. Why not an image? and could think through how could a creator of all things be encapsulated or adequately represented by any image or created thing. It really wouldn't be possible, especially given that what he's seeking after is a relationship with him, not a relationship with some thing. Think perhaps of a spouse and the ring that is sometimes given as a symbol of marriage. If one were to be so totally obsessed with that image of the relationship, the ring, and forbear the relationship itself or ignore the relationship itself, that it would not be a good thing. So again, to the crux of the command and and the big change is don't make for yourselves. Uh, And I think images are just the context of the day. That's, That's what was done with God's images were created. But again, the God of Israel here is saying, don't create an image. So for our day, we don't really have carved images of deities we venerate, though we do still fall into some of the same traps of creating for ourselves through systems, ideas, and practices by which we think we can somehow appease God or manipulate the universe to get the outcome to be to our benefit. We still play the game of trying to manipulate God and the universe to get our way. Some examples, positive thinking thinking that with our thinking, as long as we keep our thinking positive, we can have an impact on things. Or choosing joy. I could do a whole podcast on that in and of itself, but that idea of we choose joy, we choose our feelings, it's again a a manipulation, a creating of some kind of image. 
the law of attraction, come up with some kind of a, a law where we think we can attract good things into our lives, that we have power to do that. Perhaps another we see in Christian circles is conjuring up enough faith or belief to alter reality. Whatever the case, instead of listening to God, we make our own image, we make our own ideas. But God says, don't make for yourself. Seek and learn who I am for real. How life and reality really work, what's true. Let me teach you. I think our aim is to be a truth and knowledge seeker. God says over and over again in many different places, he'll end something he's done or something he's said with, so that you may know. Over and over, God is trying to teach us about himself and things that we can know about him instead of things we make up about him. And he says also, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And isn't that true? There are so many things we blindly and ignorantly walk into and suffer some kind of consequence because we don't know enough about the situation or about the realities of what are taking place. So really, like any of the rest of us, God wants to be known and understood for who he really is and not have us have some warped view or idea of him. He doesn't want to be misunderstood like we don't like being misunderstood. He doesn't want to be placated to or appeased or flattered. Um, when we encounter that kind of relationship, we immediately know that's not genuine. And we look for authentic relationships in our lives as well. And I think that's what God is looking for and why he's saying here, don't make an image of me. Don't make for yourself some ideas of me. I will teach you who I am. We've made the point of make no image for yourself. Don't make for yourself some idea or image of God. I think largely God doesn't want us to make an image for himself because he planned on providing a perfect image of himself for us. And that image, his own son, a true and accurate image of himself that we can relate to, an image that could carry and convey the most important things about himself that he wants us to know about himself, that being that he deeply loves and cares for us. In Jesus, we see that image that God is providing of himself. So Jesus is the love of God personified, a spitting image of the Father, if you will. We will often say of kids, oh, he's a spitting image of his father, or she's a spitting image of her mom. And I think that's what's going on here with Jesus and the image that God provides in him, that he's a, a spitting image of the Father. So perhaps commandment two can be understood for our day and age as look to the image of myself that I have given you and stop making stuff up that isn't true. Let's say that again, look to the image of myself that I have given you and stop making up stuff that isn't true. That's the only way we'll be able to live in reality when we start listening to the person who made reality and stop making up things for ourselves. All right, well, I think that covers commandment two and uh, I look forward to moving on to commandment three with you. <laughs>